Hello and welcome to another exclusive review by me, Alex Belfield, here at CelebrityRadio.biz. We just hit 64 million minutes viewed on YouTube. We're now the number one reviewer in the UK and Las Vegas, and this week we're at Curve in Leicester for Phantom of the Opera 2020 UK Tour. I first saw this show, I don't know, 30 years ago, and I've probably seen it 50 times since with 30-odd Phantoms on tour in the UK on Broadway and my favourite in Las Vegas. That was magical because it was edited down to 90 minutes and you were in the pub by nine o'clock. This show is an old school classic musical. Of course it is. It's been selling out for decades. The Andrew Lloyd Webber creation never ceases to wow audiences or make audiences tired of its tale. It's a timeless story of love, unrequainted love, obsession and the consequences of the above. Whatever I'm about to say must be caveated by the fact that this is one of the most amazing shows in history and the tour is up there with the absolute best. However, my job is to review, so here's what I'm going to do. As you walk into the Curve Theatre, it is amazing to see a proscenium arch, which is just glorious. It immediately puts you into an opera house, not a brand new modern state-of-the-art theatre. That costs money, and only Andrew Lloyd Webber or Cameron McIntosh could do that. These people are a cut above the rest. As I last week just went to see a dress rehearsal of Back to the Future for £90 at top price, it is amazing to see a show with such polish straight out of the gate. This show does have a different feel about it though on tour. What you notice about when you see it in town or on Broadway or even in Las Vegas was the stage was built as an opera house. So it immediately feels more intense, more immersive and more to scale. The bigger the stage like Curve, the harder it is to fill. And I think one of the problems that this production has is that the black cloth gets in the way of that through some of the more wordy scenes. In terms of spectacle though, only Weber or Cameron could put on a show on this scale. Stuff comes up from the floor, the chandelier comes down from the ceiling. I mean, where else are you going to get that in 2020? I, of course, have great sympathy with the Phantom. We have a lot in common. I mean, we're both visually disadvantaged, woefully unattractive, pariahs, outcasts, and just want to be loved. A show, though, is only as good as its talent. And we must talk about the big man in this show. Killian Donnelly is the man that people seem to love. He's done everything from Kinky Boost, where we first fell in love with him, to Les Miserables and now Phantom of the Opera, arguably the greatest role of them all. This is the one they all want. Even when they're in Les Mis, the dream of playing the Phantom is always the end goal. Interestingly, Killian plays this more hard and more vicious than any other Phantom I've seen. I've interviewed tens of them over the years. He comes out with a ferocity which is completely unique. He's also got an affectation that isn't a million miles away from Colm Wilkinson at times. It's an interesting Phantom and there's no question he's made it his own. In terms of vocal beauty, at his top register, he's absolutely magnificent. What he's done in this part, though, is made it quite aggressive and shouty. And that has to be managed, especially when you're on tour with the issues of sound. Talking of the orchestra, it was very interesting for me because at times I wondered whether much of it was on track. It's almost too perfect. I'm told there are 15 people in the pit, which is amazing. Only Lem is, I would guess, has a orchestra on that scale. Yet the sound is so polished, you couldn't actually hear the horns above the drums, for example, which is really interesting. I would love to stand behind that sound desk and work out how it's done. I think the use of track in Phantom, I'm not the first to say it, sometimes leaves me a little cold, but I guess it is what it is. Holly Ann Hull as Christine Daae is just beautiful. I mean, she's physically beautiful. She's vocally delicious. I mean, she's the perfect Christine. Congratulations to her. It was nice also to see Reese Whitfield for the first time as Raoul. He really is a big talent and has a gorgeous voice. Seori Oda plays Carlotta, which was, well, very loud and sometimes deliberately annoying, whereas the entire ensemble, of course, are at the top of the game, which you would expect. There is no doubting that in its 34th year in the West End at Her Majesty's on Broadway, on tour, and of course around the world, Phantom of the Opera is the must-see musical. If you haven't seen it, it's a joy. There's something old school about it, which is beautiful. But I have to admit there was something missing tonight that you get in the West End and on Broadway. I'm not quite sure what it was, but the magic and the magnificence didn't ring out as loud as it did just a few weeks ago when I saw it in town, which is frankly the most perfect musical production. 
Congratulations to the entire team. To put on this scale of tour is incredible. And as I say, I'm here to review and that's what I'm doing. But let's be under no delusions that this is a wonderful UK tour. It's a thrill to get it in Leicester and around the UK over the next year. The greatest of them all, some would argue. Congratulations to Killian. There's no doubting his tenacity. And to the entire cast and ensemble and crew who have really gone above and beyond to put this scale of show into a theatre like Curve. Congratulations to Curve for getting it. And don't miss Phantom of the Opera on tour throughout the UK through 2020. You've been listening to another exclusive review by me, Alex Belfield, here at celebrityradio.biz. Tell her.